So let me just jump into it. So there's a serious part to this video, and there's also a bit of a joke part to this video. So why? What's the, what's the title? Uh, the quickest way to becoming a tech lead. So let's talk about uh, becoming a real tech lead, and then we'll look at the other type of tech lead. So number one, you want to get to a lead tech position, software developer lead. So the quickest way to actually do it uh, is to build projects and then become a very good communicator, believe it or not. The people who get promoted to uh, lead positions and lead roles in organizations is because they're very good communicators, first and foremost. So believe it or not, you have to know how to communicate. Number two, you have to deliver on your word. So if you say you're, you're going to deliver your code by Friday, deliver it by Friday. And uh, number three, you got to be able to uh, get along with people, be able to manage people around you. Those people are the people who become tech leads. So this, in short, I can expand upon that a little later. Um, the other way to become the other type of tech lead, you have to make um, sarcastic remarks and every sentence uh, with, uh, what's it? The, the, you have to end every sentence with as a millionaire and you have to piss off half the audience. That's how you get to be the other type of tech lead. Seriously, though, if you want to advance in your career as a developer, if you really want to take a leadership position, besides having code competency, you have to have really good interpersonal skills and organizational skills. Those are the people who get promoted to those positions, without a doubt. If you're a genius programmer, but you can't communicate with people, or people don't understand what it is you're saying, or people don't like you, you can't be a lead. So figure that out. What happens though, when you do become a tech lead, if you will, uh, you will become more and more detached from code over time if you are successful in that position. So you have to make that choice. Do you ultimately want to be a tech lead? Do you want to be uh, get into architecture, tech, technical lead, and maybe get into uh, middle and upper management? That's a, that's a personal choice. And really, those who go up there are really people, as I say, good communication skills, interpersonal skills, organizational skills, a person of your word, man or woman. If you say you're going to deliver by Friday, deliver by Friday. It's a decision people have to make if they're fortunate enough to have that decision. I know people who never got to that position, stayed just really uh, high-level developers for their entire career, and they did fantastic. Other people will leave that and decide they want to get into that lower management, tech leads kind of lower, lower management, and then, and then they move up the ranks accordingly. Also, the downside of getting into the management uh, realm of the game is that you become more and more detached from coding, and eventually you're not really coding at all. Actually, you're not coding at all as you get more successful. If, if you're super successful as a tech lead or as a, uh, you get into a director level and VP level, et cetera, then you're not touching code much. Like these days, people ask me, do you still code? I don't code anymore. I just don't have the time. And I hire people to code. I do architect, basically. I just go in there and I know what I want. I'll do occasional code inspections. Uh, tech leads will have to do that, I'm sure. You know, now what is a tech lead? The details about that role in the organization will also depend on the organization, the type of business. They'll define it in their own way. So you just figure that out as you go along. But don't forget, at the end of the day, what's universal, besides having a good background in software development, having architectural skills in software development, uh, you have to have those interpersonal skills, those communication skills, organizational skills. That's why I teach that now. In my mentoring program slash bootcamp, I've added training on that. I get into what I, a, pro, a course I call Lizard Wizard, and that teaches you how your brain works, and what drives your decision making, and that's going to help you become a better communicator, et cetera. So with that said, let me shamelessly plug. So uh, it's my website. So I have a free training here called Lizard Wizard Komodo. It's been out for a while. I had about a thousand people sign up to this. It's free. You get it. You get what I call the daily spells sent to you. They're sent every three days, and they're designed to start training your lizard brain. So if you're thinking about upping your communication skills, you're thinking about this, this is free, check it out, Lizard Wizard Komodo, and it's based on my Lizard Wizard course here, which is my very advanced course on psychology, your brain's two operating systems, 
So it's based on the cognitive sciences, martial arts, meditation, my business experience. I have a background in psychology, by the way. So I'm not a psychologist, but this is something besides software development, my understanding of the human brain, what drives us, what motivates us has been the most important skill set I've ever uh, put together. It's helped me in so many areas. So if you're learning how to code, you have anxieties, you want to advance in your career, check it out. It's free. Uh, well, Lizard Wizard isn't free. You have to buy me a couple of coffees, but the Komodo is free. Komodo is free. Here, now check it out. Just go links below, Lizard Wizard Komodo. And uh, yeah, you have a lot of fun too. Some real interesting challenges in there. A lot of challenges that people like. So there you go. That pretty much ends that information component of the video. Now you know how to become tech lead type number one, the real tech lead or how to be a tech lead character.